you. Jumbo, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm thrilled to be back here at home. I've just come back from a safari in Kenya, and it was very exciting. I know all of us are really exhausted with this pandemic, but in reality, it is time to start making your travel arrangements. Um, East Africa, that's Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda, have been open since last August. And we have actually had clients traveling with us since September last year. So we're about six months into our traveling season and moving forward very quickly. So if this is one of your bucket list trips, it is time to make plans. Africa has everything you're looking for. It has those wide open spaces, you know, so you can space out, you can feel alone, you're not crowded. It has wonderful cultural experiences, some of the best in the world um, for families, for children, and just for people alone. And also, don't forget, it has the greatest wildlife show on this earth. You know, prides of lion, um, zebras, giraffes, large herds of wildebeest. This is what you really do want to see when you go to Africa is the greatest wildlife. Um, and as I said, I've just come back from Kenya and had amazing wildlife viewing. You will get up very close to the wildlife, almost to the point where you could touch them. And most of these photographs that you're looking at were taken on iPhones or little digital cameras. So you don't need expensive photography. Uh, you can get the same photo yourself. Of course, a big trend is everyone wants to go gorilla trekking in Rwanda. That's a big trend now. You have to be pretty fit and it is at altitude, but nevertheless, uh, sitting next to a silverback is completely life-changing. Africa's huge. You can see that three United States <clears throat> fit into the continent of Europe, uh, sorry, continent of Africa. Um, so just understand that if you're gonna select um, three, four, five countries to visit, a lot of your time will be spent in traveling days. So perhaps uh, uniforming your ideas and maybe going East Africa once and then uh, a second trip into Southern Africa. And I know you're all thinking, well, I'm only going once. 50% of visitors do actually visit twice or three times, four times. We do have clients that have been nine or 10 times. I also wanna point out that COVID across Africa, this is the World Health Organization map, it's very low. Um, you hear about spikes in Kenya, you hear about spikes in South Africa. I wouldn't be overly concerned because the figures for COVID in all of these countries is much, much lower than in the United States and African countries adhere to mask wearing, social distancing. Every lodge, every hotel, every airline um, has your face covers on, you sanitize your hands all day long, and we're well aware of those conditions for you. But your safari is exactly what you would have. Uh, yes, masks are required in all the countries that you do safaris in. However, if you're out there in the bush and it's just you and your family, and you don't want to put your mask on, that's fine. You will find that our staff, our safari directors, our concierges will always remain masked and a few feet away from you. Um, we always have the problem that when people come to leave, they want to hug the people, thank them. Most of them invite our safari directors back to the United States. We are, after all, one family. Um, the flights that you take into the camps, they do have restricted seatings now. Um, obviously, um, the major flights going in, international, you have a middle seat blocked. Well, on these smaller flights, they spread you out as well. You always have to sanitize your hands before you enter the aircraft, put your mask on, take your seat. They take very good care of you. Every time your luggage moves, it's always sanitized. So you see a lot more activities to do with COVID than you do here in the United States. Yes, through the last six months and continuing on, if you need a COVID negative test to return to the United States or move on to the next country, we will facilitate it. And more than that, we of course will pay for it. So we take this out of you and take care of all the details so you don't have to worry about it. You just need to go and enjoy the safari as it is. All the activities are the same. People are going up on balloon safaris. They're looking down across Africa and enjoying it. Um, activities like bushwalks, um, horseback riding, um, motorbike riding in, out in the plains of Africa. All of these things are going on just normally. However, you may have to wear a mask if you're in close contact to a Maasai warrior or something like that. That's it. 
I can't explain more than that, that your safari right now is going to be just as good as it ever is. And what a moment. What about this photograph for a mountain gorilla? So welcome to our Africa. And I also want to talk now a bit about the questions that Ryan raised. Where do I go in Africa for my safari? Well, let's start with East Africa, the traditional uh, destinations of Kenya and Tanzania. If any of you have seen the movies, Out of Africa, Born Free, even The Lion King, these were all filmed in East Africa. So if you can see that imagery of the plains of Africa, if you can see the acacia trees, etc., that is the traditional safari destination. In East Africa, if you had a 10-day itinerary, eight days, will be in various different lodges or camps in different areas, maybe in two countries, but you will be in the bush with the wildlife. It's not like other parts of Africa. When do I go, you may say? Well, peak season is the dry winter months, June to October. There are other parts of the season, e.g. Christmas time, great time to be in Africa for the family. And if you like young babies, maybe January, February. But certainly look at the June, October period as the best time to do that. Weather, moderate temperatures, no rain, um, animals are forced to where water is. So game viewing is fabulous. In East Africa, you can look out for miles and all you see is the plains dotted with acacia trees. You will see large prides of lion, large herds of elephant, wildebeest by the hundreds all over the place. So you can see the big five up there, the rhino, um, the Cape buffalo, all of these things you will see. And you will sit very close to the wildlife. This is the home of the traditional tented safari. And this is a tent. It's kind of like a hotel room with some canvas. So you have all your creature comforts, all of them. Hot water, showers, flush toilets, everything. You just have a tent with a view. And of course, as I mentioned, Rwanda, becoming more and more popular with people as an extension to your original safari. So you'd perhaps go to Kenya or Kenya, Tanzania and extend for about four days into Rwanda to do gorilla trekking to see the mountain gorillas. I often get questions about migration. Well, the migration is really about the wildebeest. And yes, there's about a million and a half of the wildebeest. It's kind of like a circle of life. Um, they gather in the lower Serengeti, probably uh, sometime in early May, they start to move across the Serengeti Plains, they cross into Kenya sometime in June or July, they stay in Kenya till about mid-October, and then they journey back. It's very easy for us to get you to see part of the migration. It is not that easy to get to see a river crossing, because as I said, they cross in June or July. Well, if you're planning a year out, it's very difficult. I suggest that if you're going into East Africa, you go at the prime season to see as much wildlife as you can. And if there's a river crossing close, we'll get you to it. That's the best way to plan your East Africa safari. Now, Southern Africa. For those people who perhaps don't want to spend the majority of their time on safari, they want variety. You want a city experience, you want activities, you want some game viewing, but not all the time. Here we take people into South Africa, which is the iconic destination, Botswana, very popular for the Okavonga Delta. And we also take people into Namibia, Zimbabwe and Zambia for Victoria Falls. But let's just talk about South Africa, which is the country that anchors all of the safaris in Southern Africa. What I said to you about prime time, June to October is exactly the same for South Africa. It is the dry winter months, which are great for game viewing. Most itineraries will include both Cape Town, which is a city experience and proper game viewing up in the greater Kruger National Park area. Most of you will stay in private lodges. However, that's about 1200 miles apart, which means there's a different weather pattern. So if you were to go say in July, or August, and you went to Cape Town, Cape Town has a Mediterranean climate. So you're going to have wet, cold and windy 
think a little bit like San Francisco in winter. So perhaps spring and autumn are good months to visit South Africa. Game is good, it does not migrate, it's always there. So just remember when you're planning your trip into South Africa, remember the distance between where the prime game viewing is and Cape Town. So just keep that in mind. So maybe going in July, August is not the best, but maybe September, maybe late May, uh, play with the shoulder seasons when you go into South Africa. And yes, wonderful city, Cape Town, one of the most beautifully scenic uh, towns in anywhere in the world. It's like a European little city. Notice the flat table mountain in the background. You can go down to Cape Point and steer out across the end of Africa. Tremendous restaurants, museums, activities. You can see penguins on beaches there. Uh, 45 minutes out of Cape Town, you have a 300 year old wine industry with some of the best Cape Dutch architecture in the world. So you can have a lot of different activities and then fly up and have maybe four days or three days in a private lodge in open land drovers, seeing the big five up close and personal. Some of our guests add in Victoria Falls uh, as a treat. They do it as an extension, or maybe you want a combination. Maybe you want to do Botswana and the Okavonga Delta and South Africa. Remember for Botswana, try to stay in season, June through maybe late September. Most people don't realize, but Botswana is 65% Kalahari Desert. So try to stay in the winter months if you're including Botswana. And again, just the highlights. For East Africa, it's all about wildlife and wonderful interaction with the Maasai people, it's tribal culture. It's various different species and different places, but most of your time is going to be on safari. Southern Africa, a little bit different. You will have your city experiences and different adventures, and you will have maybe four days on safari, and you can add on things like Victoria Falls. So much more variety, but you will not have the vision of the Great Plains of Africa. So best time to go is the same in all destinations. Try to stick to that June, October window. Um, Botswana, it's very important you stay in season. And even Victoria Falls, you know, the falls thunder across in winter. But as you get further down the year, September, October, it becomes a bit of a dribble as the Zambezi lowers. So look at the shoulder seasons if that helps you price wise, but try to stay as close as you can to the main season. So some of you may not have heard of Mikado Safaris and there are three ways you can travel with us. One is we do a very customized, personalized, handcrafted itinerary for you and yours. You may not be the kind of person that wants two nights here, two nights there, two nights somewhere else. You may want to stay four nights. You may want to take over a bush villa. You might like the words like, privacy. I want to be private. I want to be there alone. I want to take over an eight tented camp. I want to move when I want to move. Um, so we make sure you have the experiences, but we'll handcraft everything to your needs and what you want to do. And we have all these personal relationships, so we're not worried about that. We have exclusive use to bush homes, private homes, lodges, everything. Then we have our classic small groups. A lot of people like to do this. They like to mingle a little bit. In East Africa, we'll take 18 of you. In Southern Africa and even India, only 12. It's more small. We want our safari directors to have a personal relationship with each and every one of you. And I just want to say it's guaranteed. So when the countries are open, if everyone cancels and you're left alone, you're going. You won't have to change. This is not a company that has ever canceled on anyone. It's a wonderful way to share experiences, but also um, at the moment we have had to cut back taking six people in a vehicle back to four, that's under COVID. That probably will change back to six when this year is ended. It's relaxed and flexible terms. In other words, all we're asking at the moment, if you're looking at one of our small groups and you're a year out or something, we're just asking a $500 deposit to hold space until you're sure you want to do it. And we've been doing this all through the pandemic, and that's still in place. This is a popular uh, choice for some of you, private classic. Taking a small group departure date and making it private to your family or private to your friends. So you'll have your private guide, your safari director with you, and it'll be just you. 
You can even have the options of going for um, uh, private flights, charter flights, so that you're again, only you. And this has become more and more popular with people going into Africa. They want to make it personal. They want their family to have their own guide and be out there in Africa alone. And we get it. It's a wonderful way to travel. So why use Mercado? I could spend quite some time in telling you about the numerous awards we've had over 55 years, but I'm not going to do that. Yes, we've been uh, Travel and Leisure's nine times world's best safari outfitter. But what we really want to say to you is uh, we care about you. This is a family owned company. We have for 55 years had consistency, continuity, and we hope that you will be comfortable in booking with us, even through this pandemic we have sent people into Africa. We take care of all the details. I mentioned earlier about us organizing your COVID tests and paying for them. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. But it's more than that. We have our own staff in all the destinations. So you're just dealing with us. Our safari directors are some of the most qualified in Africa. But more than that, they're like your personal assistant. They're like your private guide. They make sure if you're a vegan, that every camp you go to, there's a vegan menu for you. If there's anything that you need in a camp, they're there to assist you. And they're a font of information. Most people who travel with us want to take their safari director home with them. And I've just come back from Kenya and I know what it's like. We have a second team, concierge. It's not a hotel concierge, it's not a VIP desk. These people work behind the scenes to help you. So if you arrive and your bags are lost, they take it over and chase for the luggage. If you've arrived and somehow you've left your prescription meds at home, they're there to get it fixed, get a doctor for you, get your doctor in the United States, get a prescription, get it to you. Camera not working, they'll find out how to fix it. If you've left your glasses behind in a camp, they're chasing them for you. They are there constantly working to make sure that you have a seamless safari and you're not concerned about anything. No tipping. We take care of everything. Doesn't matter. Airport porter, girl serving breakfast, anything. We've got it. So you don't have to carry wads of money or anything like that. We just want you to put foot in Africa and start enjoying the moment. So we've taken care of all of that. We want to make sure you get the right feeling about us. So we do give you the uh, Mikado Safari bag. It's designed by Marmot has wheels on it. And just in case you don't think you can fit all your things in that bag, we'll do all the laundry all the way anyway. So you don't need a lot of clothes to go on safari and all your meals are included. Okay, even in the city, lodges, camps, everything. So you don't have to worry about, do I have to get a sandwich? Where do I go to get it? What's the story? We've got it covered. And of course, you can have wine or a beer with your meals. Um, the food in Africa, excellent. Chefs um, rated, world rated all over Africa. I've just come out of Kenya and the food was fabulous. So no problem about eating any of the food in any of the destinations. We deliver some of what we think are the best luxury safaris in the world. We have relationships with all the camp owners and all the lodges. We decided never to own a camp or a lodge I'm not selling you a bed. I'm selling you an experience. And I think it'll change your life. We have relationships with all these people. We know who to book for what reason. We know bush homes. We have villas in the bush. We have tented camps, large lodges, small lodges. It doesn't matter. We have those relationships to make it your very, very best trip of a lifetime. And what's more, I just want to touch on the heart and soul of Mikado. And that is for every one of you that does travel on safari with Mikado, we educate a slum child from start of school to the end of high school. What an amazing gift you give us every time you travel with us. Our sales meetings aren't about how many people or how many bookings we've made. It's about how many more children we can educate. And if you know anything about Africa, it's education that rises people out of the slums and gives them work and hope. And we've been doing this for well over 30 years. Uh, America Share has had this commitment with us all that time and schools are back in Kenya. You'll notice that the first photograph, they were very crowded. Now our schools have to be spaced out. The children wear their masks 
Our libraries are now open for everyone in the slum area comes in. We have to space people out more now. We have computer rooms, to, not only for the children for their lessons, but also to help people get jobs. If you can't work a computer, you can't get a job. So we have free lessons for the adults in the slums as well. So we are entrenched in America Share and educating children. Our second one is Huru International, making reusable supplies for young girls. We usually go out across East Africa into the villages doing sex education and supplying young girls with these reusable pads and everything. Uh, during the pandemic, we actually made our factory where we employ people to make masks. We gave out about 100,000 masks to people in the slums. And this is part of very, very part of, of Makoto Safaris. This is the heart and soul. This is why we want people to come to uh, Africa and go on safari with us. It's because you're all giving back and you don't have to do anything except enjoy your safari. So together we make changes. We can inspire people. We can get children educated and we can actually make a better world. I, I'm here to, go, to tell you there's a major, incredible scenery waiting for you. There's uh, amazing experiences waiting for you. And of course, I, we can get you up close to the wildlife. Uh, it would be our pleasure. We have a program with Bon Voyage Travel where we know you're going to spend a lot of money decking yourself out to go on the safari because everyone does. So everyone who makes a new booking with them up till uh, April 30th of this year, you can get $200 uh, a person and go shopping on us. So if you want our what we call the Africa book or our brochure. Um, you can also get it from Bon Voyage Travel. They have them available. It's 177 pages, but it tells you who we are. It tells our story and I hope it convinces you to go to Africa. Um, I think most of you are familiar with the locations of Bon Voyage. And I'm just gonna stop now and see if Ryan is there and I hope I've kept on time. <laughs> You've done great, Pamela. I appreciate uh, you taking us down to Africa, over to Africa. If you uh, want to stop sharing your screen, I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about my experience uh, with Mikado. Just everything you touched on is true. And a lot of our people presentation, you're going to hear, oh, this is great. This is true. This is the way that it is. It's absolutely true uh, in regards to Mikado. And one of the things you mentioned about the concierge team, the team of ladies that are back at the hotels, yeah. They're always popping up wherever you need them. And we have a true story as simple as this. My wife left her book at one of the lodges, thought, well, it's gone. It's just a book. Uh, and she mentioned it uh, just in passing to one of her friends and a concierge overheard it. We didn't even take it to the concierge. She overheard it. And by golly, at the next tented camp, there was the book lying on my wife's bed when we checked into the hotel. That's exactly the type of of, of service that is there. And Catherine, I don't know if you can, we've got a couple more minutes. If you could allow me to share my screen, I have some things I might just want to show. Uh, the other stuff is the America Share program that I think, mm. and Huru International. Uh, and I wanted to draw some special attention uh, to those two entities. Uh, bon Voyage Travel has a unique connection uh, to Huru International. And I just wanted you to know that that's Lorna. She's the leader of Huru International there uh, on your screen with me and, uh, and my wife uh, at the Huru International plant there in Nairobi. And uh, we have donated uh, some, some gifts uh, and have helped build uh, some things with Huru and with, uh, and with the, the Makuru uh, slums there. So we have some pretty neat things. Uh, that Ryan, we can you can't yes. see your screen. Yeah, we don't see your screen. Okay, well, let's select it. <laughs> if we can get that, great. If not, the point being is, is that there's some very, very special stuff uh, that Mikado is doing. Let me try this one last time. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll skip it. Do you see it now or no, not yet? Oh yes, it's just come up. Yeah. All right, so there's me on the far left. Uh, that is <laughs> obviously on a Mikado safari that's in the Ngorongora crater. Uh, I get to jump with uh, the Maasai warriors and no, I can't jump as high as they can. Uh, that is- Almost. 
Uh, if Almost. you're curious how close you get to the wildlife, that is my wife on the upper right taking a picture uh, of that leopard who was just sauntering past our Jeep. So it was an amazing experience. We were safe the entire time, but if you wanna know how close you're gonna get, that's exactly how close you're going to get. So just an exciting uh, and life-changing destination. If you have more questions for Pamela, if you want to engage with our advisors, go to the chat box, click on the chat box, and you'll see a link there that says to join a meeting for this webinar or to talk to an advisor. Click on that link. That'll take you into the meeting room. You can engage one-on-one -on -one with Pamela. Get those real specific questions answered. How much bug spray do I need to worry about? Is it going to be raining in May? Should I worry about that? What type of wildlife will I see if I go to South Africa? Is it more of a game reserve or more in the wild? Hopefully I've planted a lot of questions for you to think about. But I want to thank Pamela for joining us. Thank you for your partnership with Mikado. We love working with you guys. Well, we love our partnership as well. And thank you, Ryan. I'll slip over to the chat room.